Beef demand. It all depends on consumers and the economy. Two things that these days are constantly changing. At this year's cattle industry summer meetings, food service and retail representatives had a chance to learn more about how these factors are impacting beef demand both today and tomorrow. We'll talk about basically the economy in the U.S. is stronger than uh, generally people believe. Uh, if you define recessions as two consecutive quarters where the gross domestic product doesn't grow, we've had 14 in the last 80 years, but we've come out of every one of them stronger than when we went in with almost double the growth rate in every single one. Will we have another recession? Probably. But basically, uh, they're a natural part of who we are. We'll get through this one and the economy will grow and uh, we'll continue to uh, provide uh, the world with a lot of good food in the process. Dr. Lowell Catlett of New Mexico State University is optimistic about the future of the American economy and says beef producers should be too. The, the message is this, we've never had a period in modern history where the beef producer, the cattlemen, cattle women, uh, have more of what I call a divergent market than today. We used to just produce beef, we broke it up into things and we sold it. Now people want organic, they want free range, they want uh, the animals happy, uh, some of them just want uh, a hamburger and others want uh, prime. Dr. Catlett says it's that diversity of markets that's a key to the future of the American economy and in turn the beef cattle market. It's that flexibility that will also help reach an entirely new and large group of consumers. Generation Y is the group of Americans born between 1977 and 1995, according to expert Jason Ryan Dorsey. Using those birth years, which are U.S. specific, you'd come up with about 79.8 million people in the U.S. And what's really important for the beef industry is that that represents about 200 billion in annual spending and we influence another 50 billion. Dorsey says this group of highly influential consumers has different expectations and methods of communication than previous generations. And how you reach out to Generation Y is key. That whole social experiment for us is too much. In fact, if you call us, we won't answer, but if you send us a text, you know, we write right back. So it's these kind of things that if a, a retailer knows, and even the supply chain, they can start to understand how do we build uh, our, our presence, our positioning to Gen Y in such a way that it's credible, that it's not seen as salesy, uh, that they want more information, and that you build the trust, because ultimately Gen Y, we're, we're very influenced by trust. So what does Dorsey say to the beef industry about what consumers really want? A lot of people in the beef industry I've spoken to recognize that Gen Y is entering. We're this huge generation. We're the entire 18 to 32 demographic. But along with that, I think there's a lot of stereotypes and I think there's a lot of misperceptions in terms of us being able to go and buy things and have money, in terms of us wanting to go and have dining experiences, in terms of us having friends over and cooking for them. And if we can cut through some of those stereotypes and get to what Gen Y really wants and then show them how they get there, I think that $200 billion plus opportunity is enormous. And I think it's something that as an industry, uh, Beef really has to step up and say, we want to be a part of this. And Dr. Catlett says these generational changes make for a bright future for America. Very optimistic because we've never had it so good. The average person that lives in poverty in America today has more dishwashers, washing machines, color television sets, every appliance that makes their life better than the average American had one generation ago. And a generation mathematically is 19 years. 20 years ago, today the average person that lives in poverty has more of the things we value and say make our life better than in 1990. And that ain't bad. Reporting from the 2010 Cattle Industry Summer Meeting, I'm Brian Baxter for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Each year, both the Summer Meeting and Cattle Industry Convention feature speakers that shed a unique light on our industry. And it's not too early to begin thinking about attending the 2011 Cattle Industry Annual Convention and NCBA Trade Show. Join me right here in Denver, Colorado, February 2nd through the 5th. You can get details at cattlemantocattlemen.org.